It's time for At Home with the Rubber Ducks, powered by First Energy. 640 WHLO gets you closer to your hometown team with stories of the game and updates from the season ahead. Line to left center, that's a base hit and a game winner for the Akron Rubber Ducks. Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, affordable family fun. High drive to right, that's well hit, back, back, that ball is gone, it's a home run. Here's your hosts, Marco Lanave and Jim Clark. Well, welcome back once again as we bring you At Home with the Rubber Ducks, Marco Lanave along with Jim Clark. And uh, Jim, still a couple weeks into what normally would have been the season, but we're excited to uh, bring some of what we've got this week on the show. Yeah, exactly right. I'll talk to Mandy Bell as we just keep the routine going, whatever it is right now. (laughs) And, of course, uh, Mandy Bell covering the Cleveland Indians and uh, she's a, one of those bright young stars in the baseball journalism world. Yes, a great athletic background out of Penn State. Um, began with Baltimore, Indian job. This is her second year. You're right. She's a rising star in journalism. And then really Cleveland's lucky to have her. And we're also lucky on the program this week. We will talk to Rubber Ducks manager Rublis Odor, checking in with him from his home in Florida. Talk with him a little bit about how spring training concluded. Also want to let you know about a couple of things. One is the first ever Legends Begin at Home charitable event. That's going to be a virtual game between the Rubber Ducks and the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. Of course, they're both owned by Ken Babby. They're going to be squaring off Friday, May 1st, in a charity event, and you have a chance to be uh, depicted on the video game if you donate to the Rubber Ducks Quackron Cares program uh, that counts as an entry into sort of a raffle uh, to uh, be drafted by the Rubber Ducks, have your identity created, and uh, those donations will be taken until noon on Monday, April 27th. So we invite you to donate again for that opportunity to be a part of that game. You can go to AkronRubberDucks.com for the details. Also, I want to let you know on the Rubber Ducks online team store, you can use the promo code RADIO to get a 20% discount on all caps in the store. Just visit AkronRubberDucks.com. Click on the shop link and at checkout, use the promo code RADIO. But let's get right to it. And we begin with our conversation with Rubber Ducks manager, Rugi Odor, who joined us from his home in Winter Haven, Florida. Normally, he would be a couple weeks into the Eastern League season by now. So we talked about this unique situation. It's different. Uh, Not being able to do things like we normally do. But at the same time, we are trying to stay productive and spending family time and, and at home. Uh, I'm doing my best to to continue to help my my two boys and and my whole family here. It's different. We just have to look at the positive side of it. Well, let's start because we haven't seen you in Akron for several months now. But let's start with the off season, so to speak, as as it normally would have been. How was the off season for you? You know what? It was it was similar to what's going on right now, except that I was taking my family out. I was taking my two boys out on a baseball field. We were practicing. We were doing uh, activities outside the house. So now it's different, but I usually go to Venezuela and work during the winter, but this past off season, uh, I don't know if you remember, MLB didn't allow us to go and work in Venezuela. And uh, because of the sanction that uh, MLB had and, and, what was going on with the USA government and, and the Venezuelan government. So I couldn't work. I ended up going there for a few weeks, visit family members, but most of my time was spent here uh, in winter heaven du- during this past off season. But um, like I said, the difference was that I was home, but we were doing different things outside the house. And, and, and now obviously uh, I'm following you know, the protocols and staying at home. And uh, everybody is, is trying to stay in touch in, in a new way now with uh, how spring training got interrupted. You were in Arizona in March uh, when things really got changed. From your perspective, how did that all unfold? What was it like to be there? Well, I remember when we were, we were having meetings with the medical department. So the first meeting, okay, you know, yeah, we're going to do it. We're, Let's make sure, you know, we wash our hands for 20 seconds and let's make sure we stay healthy and, 
and do what we were supposed to. But then we had, we had a couple of more. So after the third meeting with the medical department, I said Some, something's going on. And then we were not allowed to shake hands. We were not allowed to, to be close to each other in a spring training. So we're talking about over, what, 200 you know, people. And then uh, I remember we had a meeting where we were allowed to sign autographs, but we were not allowed to use the fans' pens or pencils. Or we, we, we had our personal pens to sign autographs. So I said, after that, I said, Some, something is not right. We didn't know. We were practicing. We were doing everything normally. But, you know, we, we are in baseball. We're kind of touching. You know, we give high five, you know, shake hands. And all of a sudden, we felt uncomfortable that we couldn't, we couldn't do that. And, and then finally, one day, we had a meeting. And, and uh, they, they let us know that uh, everybody was going to go home. I remember it was uh, March 13th. And uh, we're all going to go home. We're going to stay in our places, uh, only, only people who are rehabbing or, or need medical help, they're going to be the ones allowed to come to the facility. And then on Monday, we're going to make the decision. On Monday, the 16th. So that weekend, I ended up flying home. And um, we didn't know what was going on exactly because during that weekend, MLB was going to have meetings and MLB was going to let the front office of each organization know what the decision was going to be. But the front office had a very good idea. This, this was something that uh, it was all about safe. It was, so, it was so, so all about being healthy. And they let us know that we could go home and, and stay with our family. So I ended up flying uh, the 13th. And then the 16, basically the operations were shut down with players just uh, staying there uh, who needed uh, medical help. And then after that, everything else was shut down. So from what you know now, what are, what are different people in, in player development and, and the players, what, what are they doing? How are they spending this time? We are staying in touch with them. Uh, we have talked to every single player in the organization and they all are doing something. Obviously, some players, they have equipment. Some players don't have other equipment. But every single player is doing something on their own, in their house. The message we're sending is that they need to make sure they do what they can to stay health, uh, healthy and stay safe. And uh, we're not recommending them to go out and, and go to a baseball field and, and play catch with anybody or with a group of people. Uh, we're recommending them to stay at home and play catch with parent, dad, brother, mom, sister, if they know how to do it. But uh, that, that's the message we're sending. With the player have, I've talked to, I talked to about 10, 11 players. One of them was uh, the only one who wasn't doing much because he, uh, he didn't have anybody in the house. But um, uh, the rest of them, I talked to a couple of them that they told me, Rugi, we're having a spring training at home. Rugi, I have in my garage, I have everything I need. I go out, I run, I have a batting cage in the backyard. So some players are doing their best to, to stay in shape and, and to continue to do some type of baseball activities in a different way, obviously, but they are doing their best to stay in shape. And how are you staying in shape or in, in contact with, with your colleagues? Well, um, I'll tell you what, I do something every single day. I'm glad that we still are allowed to go out and exercise. So I ride bikes uh, with my boys. Sometimes I do it by myself. I walk, I jog, I run. But every day I go out and do something for at least an hour. And, uh, and I feel great. I have a couple of weights here. I have a medicine ball, and, and I do some exercises here at home uh, with my boys. But um, every day we do something. Uh, we, we do something in a spring training, and obviously throughout the whole season, but this is more in a spring training, that uh, Jay Hennessy brought from the Navy. Every single Friday or one day a week at 6 o'clock in the morning, 
you are invited to do what is called Monster Mash. And what it is, is something that uh, uh, they do in the Navy. It's is basically exercising for 30 minutes. It's like CrossFit, very similar. But you can do it on your own pace. So we were doing it once a week in spring training. And now, since we're not allowed to obviously do it like we were, we're doing it virtual. We're doing it online. And once a week, I have that exercise uh, with me. And uh, uh, family members, are, are, they're, they're invited to do it. So my two boys, are, they, they've been doing it. And you see other kids doing it too. And it's been, it's been great. So we, we're trying to do our best to, to stay productive and continue to stay in touch by text messaging, by emails, video calls, FaceTiming. So we, we're, we're doing a pretty good job as far as communicating and staying in touch. That was Rubber Ducks manager Ruglas Odor. We'll have more with him shortly. But we do want to remind you of that special offer on baseball caps in the Rubber Ducks online team store. Use the promo code RADIO to get a 20% discount on all caps in the store. Just visit AkronRubberDucks.com, click on the shop link, and at checkout, enter the promo code RADIO. Stay tuned for more with the Rubber Ducks manager right after this. You're listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO, your new home for Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. Here at Sarah Auto Park, community service has always been a priority of ours. These days, that spirit is more important than ever. Join us as we do everything we can to take care of our doctors, nurses, all other essential businesses, and their employees. If our community needs us for anything, even to safely get a bag of groceries to our most vulnerable. We're here. We'll get through this together. Sarah Auto Park. Wes Miller here. When my friends ask me who's the number one pick for print and copy solutions in the Akron area, I always tell them Meritech, the pride of the rubber ducks for the past nine years. Meritech's roster also includes IT consulting, cloud, voice, and data services for a powerhouse lineup to reduce risk, control costs, and increase productivity. So call Team Meritech today and tell them Wes Miller sent you Meritech technology to empower your business. Exceptional care means having access to world-class physicians and services. That's the care Cleveland Clinic Akron General provides to Akron and the surrounding communities. Whether it's primary care or specialized services, we put your needs first with care that is comprehensive and best of all, close to home. Cleveland Clinic Akron General is committed to the community and your health. To learn more about our services close to you, visit akrongeneral.org. KeyBank makes it easy to manage your money anytime, anywhere. I am crushed for time. KeyBank can help. How? And how soon? You have a smartphone? I have to. It keeps me organized. Download the KeyBank mobile app and then use your phone to deposit checks on the go, transfer money, even pay bills automatically. Awesome. Indeed. Learn how you can make even more financial progress when you use the red key. Only at KeyBank. Visit key.com or your local branch. Member FDIC. Are you looking for a great apartment with the best location? Fur Hill Towers Apartments is just a five-minute walk to the University of Akron or a five-minute drive downtown. You'll find spacious living, convenience, and fun with a wide variety of restaurants and entertainment just outside your door. Perfectly suited for young professionals and students on the go looking for off-campus living. Stop by 55 First Street Hill, Akron, or call 330-762-7000. That's 330-762-7000 today and reserve your apartment home. For a lawn that looks as good as Canal Park, depend on Grassmaster. They're a locally owned and operated full-service lawn and landscape company. The development of a healthy and attractive lawn or landscape requires a great deal of time and hard work. It's Grassmaster's commitment to providing the necessary ingredients of knowledge and treatment materials to develop a healthy and attractive lawn or landscape. By choosing Grassmaster as your lawn and landscape company, you are assuring that your investment is protected and will grow in value year after year. Visit thegrassmaster.com. Everyone at Honda wants you to be safe. And right now, you need a car you can count on and your dealer to go the extra mile. So if your Honda needs parts or service, we're right here ready to help. Working to follow all government guidelines in order to get you what you need and help you stay safe with a reliable car that's ready to go when you need it. Visit northernohiohondadealers.com. 
Your business has a story to tell. Let Fast Signs Medina help you using the right mix of visual communication solutions like signs, banners, digital displays, fleet graphics, mobile marketing, health and safety communications, and so much more. Give Fast Signs Medina your business challenge and we'll come up with a plan to grow your business, reach more customers, and accomplish more than you ever thought possible. Fast Signs Medina, more than fast, more than signs, more than ready to help you grow your business. Call today and say go Ducks for your discount. This is At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO. Deep drive out to right field. Rafaela turning, watching. It's gone to the Bud Light line, Tiki Terrace. Your new home for Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. Welcome back. This is Marco Lanabe. And this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Brubaker's Pub, Crown Granite and Marble, and Summa Health, all part of our lineup presenting Rubber Ducks broadcasts on 640 WHLO. We're now continuing our conversations across social distance. Pleased to be joined by Rubber Ducks manager, Ruglis Odor, and uh, Rugi is down at his home in uh, Winter Haven, Florida. Now, when spring training stopped, the, the Major League spring training had been going for, for a couple of weeks, but what stage were we at with the minor league side? And, uh, as, of course, as everyone would want to know, uh, how close were we to knowing what the roster coming to Akron might have been? I remember that that weekend we were supposed to start playing baseball games in the minor leagues. And, and the 13th was my first day with the minor leaguers. I was, I was in big league camp. So the whole AA coaching staff was sent down the 13th. That was the day that basically things were shut down and, um, we, 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 didn't play, we didn't play a game in the minor leagues. We had a pretty good idea what, what the, the uh, teams were going to be, not the rosters, but we couldn't play one game in the minor leagues. So we were just practicing, and, and, and I think the first game was going to be Saturday, and Friday the, the front office decided to send players back home or back to their hotels and places in Arizona for those two days that MLB was thinking about what decision was going to make. So we couldn't play one game. So we don't know. We don't know. So thinking about, hopefully, we're, we're hoping that baseball comes back very soon uh, and when the time is right. But from your perspective as a manager, what uh, does, does your team, whoever's on that team, what do you need to do in order to be ready to, to play games? Like I said, they, they are doing their best to stay in shape. I remember I talked to one of them that he was very concerned uh, because he was going to move from Arizona to another state, and he didn't know if he was going to be able to do what he was doing in Arizona. But, but at the same time, let's say we're going to start the season, let's say we're going to start the season in June. Just an example. Let's say June 15th, right? We're not going to tell the players, hey, go to, to, to Akron and get ready that in two days, you know, day after tomorrow, we're going to start playing. No, when things hopefully get better, what we're going to do is players are going to have at least two, three weeks to get in shape and might not be like a, like a full spring training, but in two or three weeks, if you are doing something in two or three weeks, you should be able to, to stay in shape and, and continue to, to get better to start playing baseball games. So it's not going to be, okay, tomorrow you're flying to Akron, the day after you're going to play. No, we're going to have that type of, if we can call it like mini spring training. And also, I don't think we're going to be going to Arizona and work out for two or three weeks. I think the front office is going to make a decision where this is uh, the roster in Columbus, in Akron, in Lynchburg, Lake County. This is, these are the players who, who we think they deserve to be playing there. And then in our affiliates, we're going to have those practices for two or three weeks, and then we're going to start playing baseball games. So at this time of year, we're used to having baseball games just about every day. 
with the season delayed, what do you what do you miss most about baseball? My uh, my relationships, you know, with you guys and the players, the, the coaching staff, uh, fans, and front office, everyone. You know, I miss Shad, Dave. You know, the, the clubhouse guys. I mean, they they do such a great job. It's uh, everyone in Akron. I had a I had a great time and. What uh, what you guys do is it's amazing. And you guys don't know how easy you guys made my job, and um, that that's what I miss. You know the camaraderie, you know, with you guys, and, and not being able to touch a player, to help a player to develop so they can play one day in the big leagues. You know that's 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 something that I really miss a lot. Well, we saw you do that last year, uh, managing for the Akron Club. Looking back now at last season, what stands out to you? I think the team chemistry, it was huge. We had a great, great group of kids. It didn't matter if a player went up or a player went down. Whoever was joining the team was fitting, and, and, and we, had, we had a great, great team chemistry. Uh, we didn't have a winning season as far as the record goes, but what the players did, and... Uh, I remember uh, DJ went up, Dan Johnson went up, Kai Tom went up. At the end, Ernie Clement went up, Karin Cech, and, and maybe I'm missing a few other guys, but they helped the AAA club win the championship there, and that was, that was huge. That was great. And then after, you know, some of the players, you know, uh, went to the big leagues, like, like uh, Plisak, Zivale, and at the end, car in check. And we were so close to make it to the postseason at the big league level. That's what I do remember. We were having a great chemistry. We were developing players to go up and to help at the next level. And, and that's what we did. And clearly you guys are, are making an impact, like you said, throughout the, the Indians organization. And spring training is kind of that time to get a glimpse of the future. Um, from your observation, among the players who we saw last year in, in Akron that you had last year, who were some of those that made some strong impressions in, in the Major League Spring Training this year that we did have? I'll tell you what, uh, I remember uh, Mitch Longo. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he was 4 for 4 his first four at-bats. So as a, as a rookie at the big league level in spring training, you're not going to take four at-bats in one game. You're not going to take three. So you're going to take one at bat one day, and then you're going to play uh, probably in another two or three days, and then you're going to take another at bat at the end of the game, and then you're going to have to wait another two or three games to take another at bat. So, and I remember he was three for three, and I said, and I think he's three for three. And I said, Longo, you know, I haven't seen anybody hitting a thousand in spring training. You know that, and he's a rookie. Why did you say that? Oh, you janked me. Why did you say that? So guess what? He took his next at bat, and I'm like, please don't, please hit a single. So he ended up walking. He drew a walk. He was, he, he was, he still was three for three. And I said, see, don't believe in that. Then he took another at bat, and I think he got a single. So he 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 took a lot of good at bats. He didn't take too many at bats, but he left a good impression. Kai Tom also took a lot of good at bats, and uh, what Kai did last year was unbelievable. But uh, he also took good at bats. Ernie Clement also, you know, did a good job in um, in big league camp. Anthony Gold was throwing the ball very well. He did a very good job, and he went to Puerto Rico in the off season and, and did a good job there too. And and uh, now he's throwing. His breaking ball better, you know, he, he was more of a fastball changeup and learning to throw his breaking ball last year. And he, he, ha he has a good feel for it. And he, he proved that he can throw it uh, for strikes and, and out of the zone to strike people out. And he did a great job in big league camp too. So I remember those guys having uh, success in uh, big league camp. Well, that's great to hear. And, and this just gets me more excited for the season, Rugi. So Thank you so much for your time. We're really looking forward to having you back in Akron. No, thank you. Thank you very much and hope to see you guys soon.
That's Rubles Odor, the man who manages the Rubber Ducks on the field. And you can take the field virtually for the Rubber Ducks this week. Make a donation to the Quackran Cares program at AkronRubberDucks.com for a chance to be drafted by the Rubber Ducks for the all-time lineup on an MLB The Show video game matchup. Legends begin at home. That will be against the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. To be eligible, your donation must be made by noon Eastern time on Monday, April 27th. Now, coming up after the break, Jim Clark will talk with Indians.com reporter Mandy Bell. That comes your way after this. You're listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO, your new home for Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. This is At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO. Really home it is. Not in time. Two-run double by Mejia. Akron now leads it 6-2. to two. Your new home for Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. Welcome back. This is Jim Clark, and this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Texas Roadhouse and Stowe. Open for drive through carry-out, and curbside service Monday through Thursday, 3 to 9, Friday to Sunday, 11 to 9, and at texasroadhouseorderonline.com. Talking with Mandy Bell, the beat reporter for the Indians on MLB.com. And Mandy, welcome to At Home with the Rubber Ducks. Thanks so much for having me, Jim. Let's learn about Mandy Bell. Chambersburg, PA, talk about your family's influence with you and your athletic career. I mean, uh, ever since I was little, just my, my family's just such a big sports fan family. My, my dad uh, was a big baseball and football fan. My mom's the same. And so ever since I was little, I just grew up watching sports, playing sports. I played softball, basketball, and tennis in high school. Um, but it was... It's always been baseball for me. I was always the one staying up till midnight or so every single night all through middle school and, and high school, just trying to make sure I watched as much baseball as possible. Um, and that's always been just my passion. And so ever since I, I think it was eighth grade that I said that, all right, this is what I want to do. I don't know how I want to do it. I don't know what I want to do exactly, what route I want to take, but I want to work in baseball some way, somehow. And so uh, I always wanted to go to Penn State, which is where I ended up going. And Luckily for me, they had one of the top sports journals and programs, so uh, it sort of just played out in my favor as well as it could, so I couldn't have been more lucky. Now, being Pennsylvania, was it the Phillies or was it the Pirates? Uh, it was actually the Yankees, which probably won't make me a lot of uh, friends around this area, but it was actually the Yankees. My dad was a big Reggie Jackson fan growing up, and so that then you know, brainwashed me, and then I was a big Derek Jeter fan growing up, so that's sort of how that was passed down. And you were really talented at Penn State. Um, you called play-by-play for baseball, softball, basketball, and also a great journalist. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a lot of different on, uh, programs on campus, which really, really helped us, helped me a lot. Um, we had Com Radio, which was a student-run radio station. I was the general manager of that my senior year. And, my goodness, it's, it's hard to believe I ended up in writing because most of my time was spent in radio, actually, all through school, which was uh, a lot of fun, and that. That helped me have a little bit of taste of everything, and uh, and yeah, so it, it was a lot of fun. I got to cover things writing-wise, radio-wise. I got to go to the Rose Bowl and cover that. Like There was a whole bunch of different things that Penn State helped me out with, and uh, one of them was getting in contact with, the, with MLB.com to try to get into their internship program, and that's sort of what stuck for me, so I'm very, very grateful for that. Now, your first job was in Baltimore, correct? Yes, yes. I, I interned with MLB in 2017 in Baltimore and then 2018 in New York. And then the Indian job opens up, and by golly, last year you're in Arizona. Yes, and that was that was a uh, that was a big jump. It was uh, it was a lot of fun to go from intern to to full time so quickly, and uh, it was definitely different being used to the New York media style from 2018 to going to 2019, and you jump into a much smaller market, and uh, you're used to having 40 you know, other media members around with you. And I showed up to spring training, and on the very first day, I was the only reporter down there at that point, which was a little bit shocking for someone who's not used to that style. But uh, I've, I've learned to, to like that way more. I mean, you get to have such great connections with the staff and the players and, and everybody around you. It's just so much more personal, and, and it's just the best spot that I possibly could have landed. Were you in awe of anybody when you were down there for the first time? Oh, 
man. I mean, it's it's tough not to be. It was it was pretty cool. I mean, whenever whenever you're starting to get into this world and you're you're starting to see the Ken Rosenthal's, the Tom Verducci's, the Buster Olney's, when you start walking walking around and you see these guys walking around that you grew up idolizing and and that type of thing. I mean, I know everyone's first reaction is like, oh, did you see players and get star stuff by players? But when you grow up wanting to be in the, the reporting side of the world, you're in awe of all the reporters that are there. So that was that was more of the adjustment for me, trying to look at these guys as, oh, like I, I work alongside you now instead of just idolizing you from afar. So that was a big one. Jason Stark, my goodness, when I met him last year, I was I was very excited for that one, to say the least. Well, I loved your writing style, and I noticed this last year that now you'll tell the whole story, but you're always looking for the positive. Yeah, I try to. I mean, I, I think that's important. I think uh, I, I think giving a, a reason to to have hope and to have a, a, a clear point of view and trying to find just at least a little bit of optimism in every situation is always important. I mean, it's it's tough to. Uh, go through some ruts like the Indians did to start off the year. I mean, they had a slow offensive start last year, and it, and it was tough. But, I mean, when you start to get into situations like this now where we would take anything, we would take a uh, an 0-11 run right now just to have baseball. I mean, it starts to put things into perspective. And, and uh, yeah, they could be playing not that not at their best level that they could possibly be playing. But, I mean, it's, it's better than what the alternative can be, what we're getting a taste of now. So, yeah, I mean, I've carried that throughout my entire life. I always try to find a little bit of optimism. I mean, I don't let that completely overtake me because being objective and making sure you're reporting on the facts is the most important. But, uh, but yeah, that's always been a part of me, and that's how it's always going to be with me. A very unusual Indian year in your first year, not in first place at all, no divisional championship. How was Terry Francona last year for you? Oh my goodness, I, I just, he's the best. He's awesome. I, I just, everyone tried to tell me that I needed to take advantage of the time that I have uh, covering Terry Francona. I mean, nobody knows how long he'll end up being in the game, but everyone says that you will enjoy every second that you're around him, and you will not learn more from any other manager that you would ever have a chance of covering, and my goodness, they were right. I tried to take it in from day one. I knew how cool of an opportunity this was, and he is just, he's just a national treasure. I mean, he's hilarious. Um, It's funny because he can, he can always, he's just so easy to work with no matter what. Um, I always go back to one of my favorite stories from last year. Uh, they were playing the Twins, and I think it was Odorizzi who was pitching. And he, uh, on the big screen before the game, they said it's set up there that he donates um, to local charities per strikeout that he has. And he was just dominating the Indians. And uh, we asked Tito after the game, you know, like, what was he doing? What was what was keeping your hitter so off uh, off balance against him? And he said. You know, I saw that, that message that they put up before the game that he donates per strikeout, and I just started thinking, man, he's going to go broke. And it's just so <laughs> funny because he just stays so lighthearted. I mean, everyone takes things differently, and it's not saying that he's not taking losses seriously because he is. I can tell you right now that he struggles to sleep after games like that. But the fact that he's able to keep things so light and understand the, the, the bigger picture in, in a 162-game season, he's just been so fun to cover, and I, I, I just I love every day that I get to go to work. What's your most cherished moment from your first year with the Indians? Oh my! Wow, that's a, that's a tough one. I mean, the All Star Game was absolutely incredible. I, I, honestly, from that All Star Game, there's there's a couple, but I think it's it's tied between Shane Bieber winning that All Star Game MVP and talking to his dad afterwards because that was that was really special to see his dad take so much pride in that moment and like everyone was in the whole ballpark was chanting for Bieber when he was going for that third strikeout in the fifth inning. And we go down and we talk to him, and it's like, well, what was it like to hear everyone cheering for your son like that, chanting your son's name? And he was like, well, his mother and I couldn't chant. Like, it's hard to chant when you're crying. <laughs> and, I, I mean, like, that was just so special. That and then the the moment, of course, for Cookie, whenever he uh, had the entire ballpark backing him and his, the stand-up to cancer moment, I mean – that that stuff is it's way bigger than the game and to cover his entire journey last year was just so inspirational and so moving and to have a front row seat to that was just unbelievable so I, I think just seeing the way that his team supported him the baseball world supported him both of those it's going to be hard to top those those are pretty special moments to start your uh, professional career on we were lucky to have Cookie in Akron last year as well and that was my most cherished moment in some 27 years was his work in Akron last year 
That was Mandy Bell, and this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Precious Cargo Trailways, Scene 75 Entertainment Center, and Visit Jacksonville, all partners for Rubber Ducks broadcast this season. Stay tuned. More from Mandy Bell is coming up right after this. You're listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO, your new home for Akron Rubber Ducks baseball, powered by First Energy. There aren't many things in life that are easy. There's easy listening music, easy chairs, easy money. But did you know that you can enjoy all three while getting rid of your old energy-wasting refrigerator? You can schedule a pickup without moving from your easy chair. We'll haul it away and even pay you for it. So go ahead, take it easy, and let us take it from here. First Energy's Ohio Utilities will pick up your fridge and you'll get $50. Just visit EnergySaveOhio.com to schedule a pickup. Now that's easy. Bridgestone Drive Guard tires deliver a clutch performance that won't leave you stranded on the side of a rural road or a busy highway. They're engineered to take a puncture and to keep running up to 50 miles after a flat at 50 miles an hour. Plus, you'll get the smooth, quiet ride and impressive tread wear life you've come to expect from Bridgestone tires. Let the clutch performance of Bridgestone Drive Guard tires give you peace of mind. Bridgestone, proud sponsor of the Akron Rubber Ducks. Here at Sarah Auto Park, community service has always been a priority of ours. These days, that spirit is more important than ever. Join us as we do everything we can to take care of our doctors, nurses, all other essential businesses, and their employees. If our community needs us for anything, even to safely get a bag of groceries to our most vulnerable, we're here. We'll get through this together. Sarah Auto Park. No savvy traveler likes long lines or waiting around. So, lucky for you, the Akron Canton Airport is easy and fast. With affordable on-site parking, quick check-in, and short security lines, you'll be through the airport in just minutes. CAK gives you more freedom to enjoy the things you love, like vacationing. With low fares to 11 non-stop destinations and just one stop to the world, book your next adventure from CAK. Rubber Ducks fans, check out City Barbecue in Fairlawn for the best barbecue in town. I gotta tell you, City Barbecue is the best smoked meats I've ever experienced in my life. Literally the best beef brisket sandwich I've ever had. Definitely the best barbecue I've ever had. My best all-around barbecue experience ever. Best barbecue around. Some of the best barbecue I've personally tasted. I highly recommend this spot for some of the best BBQ you'll ever have. Visit citybarbecue.com or stop by 2870 West Market Street in Fairlawn. Everyone at Honda wants you to be safe. And right now, you need a car you can count on and your dealer to go the extra mile. So if your Honda needs parts or service, we're right here ready to help. Working to follow all government guidelines in order to get you what you need and help you stay safe with a reliable car that's ready to go when you need it. Visit NorthernOhioHondaDealers.com. This is At Home with the Rubber Ducks on 640 WHLO. Here's the relay. The throw home will not be made. That's an inside the park home run. Your new home for Rubber Ducks baseball powered by First Energy. Welcome back. This is Jim Clark. And this portion of At Home with the Rubber Ducks is brought to you in part by Abridge Hospitality, Fairfield Inn & Suites, and the Courtyard by Marriott, Akron Fairlawn, all on the lineup bringing you Rubber Ducks baseball this season. Now let's get back to more with Mandy Bell. Now getting ready for this year, you were down in Arizona. Who can we look forward to when we get at Akron this year? It's definitely going to be interesting. It was fun to see a lot of the younger guys um, and I can't, I mean, let me tell you, I think Ernie Clement is one of the, the most fun people to, to watch and to cover. I know that you probably have had a lot of experience seeing him. Uh, I, I think he just has such a great character about him. I think it's funny because, uh, he was going up against James Karinczak at one point, um, during live VP sessions and he, everyone knows about Karinczak's curveball at this point. I mean, his stuff is just nasty. Um, and, and, and Clement just, it made him look silly in one of the pitches that, uh, one of his at bats against him. And I posted the video and he gave me a hard time because he didn't look good in it. And it was just all in good fun. And he was running around yelling at everybody because they were laughing. And, and I mean, I think it's, I, I think some of these younger guys, um, like Daniel Johnson or Nick Clement, I think the, the future for the Indians it seems to be pretty uh, pretty bright uh, to say the least. So I think um, a lot of those guys have been found. I think Tristan McKenzie was a uh, uh, really really itching to get back, and I think 
he's just such an interesting story now because you have him missing the entire year last year due to injury, and now he's just been itching to get back on the mound and is stuck in this weird limbo uh, along with the rest of the baseball world about who knows when we're going to get back into game action, who knows when he can get back um, against live hitters again because that, by that time it might be a solid two years since he's been uh, back in game action. So I, there's a lot of different things that go into it. And on the big league side, Framil Reyes was probably the most exciting to see down at spring training the, those first four weeks that we were there before it was cut short. I mean, his bat was just on fire, and I, I, it didn't seem like there was any slowing him down at that point. So I, I'm sure he was frustrated um, with how this played out, but obviously the entire baseball world agrees that we need to make sure that the health comes first. Mandy, I love your baseball background. In fact, you have some history with the Indians I'm starting to see because I noticed you picked your shortstops, the all-time Indian shortstops. Will Frankie give you some grief on this? You had Boudreaux first, and I loved it. Vizquel second, Lindor third, Joel Sewell was number four, and my all-time favorite shortstop, Woody Held, was number seven. You've you, you done some digging on that. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've been going position by position, I mean, uh, throughout the, this this little suspension that we have right now. Um, for MLB.com, all the teams have been digging up and trying to find the best five at each position, and it's been a lot of fun. I mean, it's been a lot of fun to compare all these stats and, and start watching some videos that I, I can of some, some past Indians that I uh, wasn't around for, I didn't get a chance to see, and, and it's been it's been a lot of fun to try to compare. I mean, out of all the ones that I've done so far, the shortstop, my goodness, that one was so difficult. You don't realize the depth they've had at shortstop until you start until you start diving into stats like this. But uh, it was hard to go away from Boudreaux. I, I heard a lot of people arguing on Twitter about it, and whenever I post those Twitter polls about who the fans think, um, but man, it's it's hard to ignore what he did and his all-time war and, and, and everything that he, he did as a player, manager, everything for the Indians to have a World Series ring and an MVP in the forty in the forty eight season, it, it was hard to say anyone but him being number one. And one stat I did not know was, I, I, at least I forgot, was he only struck out nine times in 48. And you look down to Joe Sewell, he struck out, what, 99 times in 11 years, which is unheard of. Oh, my gosh, I know. I was starting to look through that. And I, I've been talking to the Indian uh, team historian, uh, Jeremy Theodore, and I was, uh, I've been talking to him about some of the historical aspects of this when we were doing this because we're doing a simulated season as well right now um, where we're going back through and we're doing the dream bracket. And every team's top all-time team is competing against everyone else's all-time team in the simulation series, which is super cool. I've been super into this. Um, and so I've been talking with him about who he thinks uh, should go where. And, and my goodness, whenever you start looking at Joel Sewell's numbers and he was saying, like, dude, just go look at his uh, his strikeouts. And I'm telling you, if you look at that, you won't even have to think about anything else. I was like, all right, well, let's see how that could be. And my goodness, 99 times uh, in that long of a career, it's just mind-blowing. You don't see that anymore. Okay, now the big question. Will we have baseball and when will we have it in 2020? Oh, man, I, I mean, I wish I had that answer. It's just so strange because you, t you talk and, and people keep asking you, and, and your job as a reporter is to have answers. And, and I don't know is rarely ever okay to say, but um, it's weird because you just have to get okay with it during this time because I truly don't think even the league office has any idea right now because so much changes from day to day. On how many reported cases there are, how many, uh, like, uh, uh, if this curve is slowly starting to go back down in the direction we want it to go in. Um, I, I think it has to be completely safe and doable for this to happen. I mean, if it comes back, I, I, I doubt we see fans at least to start, but nobody knows right now. If, if somehow there can be a magical vaccine that happens right away, then yes, then I can see things turning around, but I don't know how that could happen. If there's no vaccine, I, they have to be so careful, especially if there are still confirmed cases out there, um, and there's so much that goes into it. My, I'm hoping at some point this summer we can start back up again. I don't know what would classify as a, a legitimate season, how many games is too few to then start up. I, I, I'm not sure what they're weighing. I don't envy Rob Manfred in the position he's in right now and how many things that he has to weigh 24-7 and how many things he has to be uh, thinking about and prepared for, but 
Um, my goodness, I'm crossing everything I have because this, this is, this is, this is tough. I mean, just being trapped up in your apartment and, and everyone sitting at home when you know that, uh, baseball season should be a few weeks in right now and, and you start thinking about it. Um, obviously you want everyone to be safe, but it, it's hard not to miss the game right now. Well, you got to think outside the box right now, and I'm sure they're doing that on a, really on a daily basis, really, a, really an hourly basis. And they're talking about maybe the three states right now. Texas being added now with Arizona and Florida, and only time will tell. Absolutely, I mean, I, I, I think that could be very well what happens if if something if the season does happen. You try to stay, you say south, and if if the heat is something that can help prevent the spread of this and and can help maybe stop everything that's been going on, and and uh, I think that's the best answer that you could possibly have. Get closer to where it would be hot, where it would be more difficult to spread, maybe where there's less cases, if there's still going to be cases out there for this. Um, do whatever you have to do to try to figure out how this works in the, the safest way possible, where you're not taking resources away from the public who needs it too. So there's so many things to balance, but I'm, I'm really hoping that they can figure this out. Well, Mandy, we're happy to have you in Cleveland now. Do you still want to cover the Yankees someday? Oh, goodness. I'm not thinking anywhere other than where <laughs> I am right now. I mean, I... Uh, I've always wanted to be in a, in a city somewhere covering baseball, and I had no idea what Cleveland would have in store for me, and I was not expecting to fall in love with the city as quickly as I did. And it's, it's so great. It's, it's, it's so, it's like, it's a city, but it, it just feels so, it's so small of a community, and I, and I love that feeling. I mean, it's just, it's so much fun in the way that, I've been able to engage with everybody on Twitter. Everyone made me feel so so welcome so quickly. So it would it would be impossible to say goodbye to this place it, it's it ever uh, in the future. So I, I don't think I'm thinking anywhere uh, uh, other than Cleveland in the near future. Well, Mandy, thanks so much. And boy, keep giving us all these great stories about the Indians. Oh, I will try. Thank you, Mandy, and thanks also to Rubber Duck manager Ruglas Odor, who joined Marco Lonave earlier in the show, and thanks most of all to you for listening. Join us next Sunday at 6 o'clock for another episode of At Home with the Rubber Ducks, which will bring you every Sunday until baseball returns to downtown Akron. For Marco Lonave, I'm Jim Clark. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to At Home with the Rubber Ducks. To listen to previous shows or for more Rubber Ducks baseball, follow the Akron Rubber Ducks podcast on the iHeartRadio app. For the latest on the team, go to AkronRubberDucks.com and follow the Akron Rubber Ducks on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Akron Rubber Ducks baseball. Affordable family fun.